Hi, in this video I will show you how we implement navigation in a pure Swift UI app that serves 550,000 monthly users in the Nordic countries, which is the app that I work on for my day job. I will explain the issues with the default navigation implementation for Swift UI and how we solve this at work to allow the coupling between navigation origin and destination views, allow backend driven routing and reusability of screens in different contexts. This is the approach that we use in the SATS app for our domain problem, so it's tailored for our use case. Your app might be similar or not, but in any case you would get some good inspiration from this video. My name is Felipe and I am an iOS and macOS developer based in Norway, with several years of experience. I post Apple development content in my Blue Sky account and in this channel. Follow and subscribe not to miss anything. The example app I will be using is a movie catalog app with similar design of the Apple TV app. I made this app for a previous video and I will use this project to extend it to use a similar pattern for navigation to the one that we use at work. The implementation is not meant to be perfect but to illustrate the same ideas we use in our private repo. What's the problem I'm trying to solve? Navigation on iOS is all about transitions between screens. It represents hierarchy and information organization in our apps. There are multiple ways to transition between screens, and in this video, I will focus on tab, push, sheet, and full screen transition types. Let's go through each type and we see how we can normally implement them on iOS. Tab. Navigating between tabs is just about clicking on different tab items inside a tab view. We can also do this programmatically by using the selection value for the tab view. Push. The push transition is all about navigation stacks and how we present a new screen animating from the trailing side of the screen. In code, we need a navigation stack and we can use a navigation link with a destination and a label. When the navigation link is pressed, we present the destination with a push transition. The problem with this approach is that we have a tight couple of the origin and the destination views in the Swift UI code. We can improve this a bit by using navigation link with a label and a value parameters instead. Then the destination can be determined somewhere else via the navigation destination modifier. This approach has less coupling, but potentially lead to duplication as another navigation stack might need the same destination for example. Sheet. This is a vertical transition where a new screen is presented vertically on top of the current one. We can make it so it's covering half of the screen via the presentation details. The sheet modifier requires a destination in a view closure, so here we have a high coupling again between the origin and the destination. If we were to reuse this presentation and destination in another view, we would need to duplicate the state and the sheet modifier implementations. Full screen. It's the same style as the sheet presentation, but as the name says, it will cover fully the current screen. The implementation is via the state and the full screen modifier, and has the same problems as the sheet one. Deep linking. One of the immediate problems with the full navigation implementation is deep linking. Our app can expose URIs via a custom protocol that allows users to access directly certain parts of the app. For example, in my movie catalog app, you can open a movie details with the URI moviecat slash slash movies slash movie ID. To implement deep linking with SwiftUI, we need to implement the on open URL modifier. Then we receive an URL, parse it to see if it matches one of the expected deep links for the app, extract parameters like the movie ID, and present the right screen. Here is an immediate duplication issue on how we present the different views. As an alternative for deep linking, we also have universal links, which you can use to associate your website to your app and open your app in a certain location when the user opens your app in the URL that is open in the phone, for example. Implementation-wise, it's also handled by the onopen URL modifier, together with some extra setup in your app and website. I will link in the description articles on how to fully implement deep linking and universal links. Both deep link and universal links are useful when opening your app via push notifications, for example. When tapping them, users navigate directly to the right place of the app the notification is about. The problems. As I shared before, the default implementation of navigation in SwiftUI can have tons of coupling and duplication. Then, if you want to implement deep linking or universal links in your app, it's not trivial as well. In the app for my day job, 
In many places, we also navigate to different screens, depending on what data we receive from the backend to tell us to. This dynamism is possible with the normal implementation in SwiftUI, but it can be difficult to have different kinds of presentation for different screens, for example. The solution. What we did at work depends on several pieces I will mention, and then I will explain how those pieces work together to solve our coupling and duplication issues. Destination and subtypes, mapping to destination to screen functions, router, navigation container, navigation button, URL to destination mapping function, destination and subtypes. The first step is to define a destination type for the app as a way to centralize the definition for all navigation destinations. In this case, the destination is an enum that contains destination by the same presentation types I talked before. Then I have the concrete destination subtypes, like push destination, shift destination, and so on. There are also enums, but in this case, their cases are concrete screens in the app. In the push destination cases, we can see movie details, actor details, and movie lists. Each case potentially has associated values that they need to fetch the appropriate data, like ID for the movie in the movie details. This treats a push destination like an isolated function that helps us to present the movie detail screen from anywhere, given only the ID of the movie. Alternatively, instead of having the sub-destination types, I could have decoupled the presentation type of the destination itself. Then, when trying to navigate to a given destination, I would also need to decide on the fly which presentation type I wanted in each case, but for simplicity, I went with the sub-destination type approach. Here you can evaluate which is the best approach for you. Mapping destination to destination views. With the destinations in place, the next step is to create a function that builds views for the different destination types. For the three cases of push destinations, movie details, actor details, and movie list, we can make a function that takes a push destination value as a parameter and builds a SwiftUI view for that input. Since the push destination cases use associated values, we can use the respective view initializers and pass the appropriate data. Then we do the same for other kinds of destination types. A router and navigation container. The next step involves two components, a router and a navigation container. The router contains the state for navigation in these different properties for the kinds of navigation. Setting the right state for the router should result in the right navigation, where the state uses the destination values. Then the navigation container owns a router object, wraps a navigation stack, and uses its router to set the state of the navigation stack and sets the SwiftUI navigation modifiers for sheet and full screen. Navigation container is the glue that binds together this navigation model, and any view embedded in one will be able to navigate to the defined destinations, provided that they set the router's state. The navigation container also sets the router object as part of the environment, so the child views can easily set up the router state, then trigger a navigation transition. Navigation button. Finally, in the actual views to render content, we can use a navigation button that will set the appropriate router's state, triggering the navigation. Navigation button is designed to be similar to navigation link, but it differs in that it works with the destination type previously defined, and also can drive different kinds of presentations. Not only the push ones, but also sheets and full screens, or select stats too. Putting everything together. The basic hierarchy of my app is like a root tab view that is controlled by a root router. Each tab contains a navigation stack, and any full screen or sheet presented will be wrapped in a navigation stack. The trick then is that instead of using navigation stack directly, I use the navigation container instead. Each container will hold its own router, which will be a child of the root router. Now when a view uses navigation button, this will read the environment value to get the current router, which will be the closest router in the hierarchy, then we ensure we set the right navigation destination to the right router. When navigating to a tab view via router, the router will check if it's the root one. Otherwise, Bob will decal up the tree hierarchy, as my assumption is that only the root router drives a tab view. Navigation container works in a way that when I present a sheet or a full screen destination, this view will be presented inside a new navigation container with a router that is a child of the current one. This tree hierarchy of routers works well with the SwiftUI model via the environment. 
Deep Linking y Universal Links. With all the previous objects in place, implementing Deep Linking and Universal Links is way easier. The first step is to write a function that takes the input URL and maps it to a destination if the URL is supported. In my code, the function is deep link destination from URL, which goes through an internal list of parsing functions to pattern match the URL to the right destination, but also extract parameters that can be found as path components of the URL as well. This is a pure function, then it's easy to test, as I can show in the test I wrote for my sample app. Once we get a destination for the support URL, the second step is to actually set the right router state. Since we have multiple routers that can be alive at the same time, we need to decide which one will handle the routing state. That's handled by the navigation container once again. Each time the router appears or disappears from the screen, the router will be marked as active. If a sheet is presented, for example, the parent view won't call the onDisappear modifier but the child router will call the onAppear, then setting that router as active. Finally, only the active router will handle the receive deep link as set up by the navigation container. Why is this approach better? Now with the full solution ready, we can ask ourselves, is this solution any better? Well, it's debatable, but at least there's some concrete advantages. For example, adding a new destination needs to define the destination itself and the mapping to the view. Then we can navigate to that new destination from anywhere in the app without code duplication. View destinations are decoupled from the view origins. We don't use concrete views, but use values to determine which view we will navigate to that gets mapped out to views. Deep and universal link support becomes easier to implement for this new destination, and we can even have the backend return deep links to navigate within the app and dynamically and driven by the backend data. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this topic. The full sample code project link can be found in the description down below. If you enjoyed this video, you can check my building UI that is easy to preview and test with SwiftUI next. Until the next one.